All right, we got four clutch, and we have the backing plate. You know, we have all the clutches and four, four clutches, and they look stock. And one, two, three, four, five steels. And Welcome to Peanuts Automotive Ventures. Yeah. As y'all can see, we have Stevie's Automotive and Dendron. I'm wrong again. Elberon, Elberon. Virginia. Elberon, Virginia. And um, we're going to bring y'all a tech video. He's, he's doing a teardown yeah. on a transmission for us. He's trying to teach us some things that we don't know, so we're coming over here to learn. But before we get into that, let's give an official shout out to our official sponsor. GraphicsBotVA.com, right where Peanuts pointing. You know, reach out to them if y'all need any graphic needs. Yep. And our second sponsor, Innovative Powders. Innovative Powders. Y'all know what to do, Team Run It. You know, reach out to them if you need anything powder coated. I'm talking about anything. Kitchen sink to car parts to anything. He can do it yep. for you. So reach out to them, Team Run It. Team Run It, we're getting out the way. We're going to let Steve do his thing and give y'all his uh, spill on this uh, transmission rebuild. Tear down. Yep. All right, this one is from Oklahoma, and this one belongs to Wendell Sharpton, and uh, like most of my customers, they find me online, and it's been here not too long. Um, it is, a, as far as I know, an original BRF unit that's never been apart, and I can tell by looking at the splines that they're chewed up that it's most probably going to be original in here, and his complaint was that it was working, but it was it was shifting hard, and then it stopped shifting uh correctly and I think he was claiming about a 3-4 flare which is usually not what we get we usually get like a 2-3 flare so we'll see what we find um, and the build plan for this is probably like a better in stock build um, I don't think it's how fast he's going to do he doesn't have it on his sheet but it's not going to be a stock unit but it's not going to be a full billet dual fed uh, unit but it's going to be you know it's going to be better in stock and by better in stock I mean we know that a stock 200 will run it will run top 10s um, so if it's better in stock, it's going to be capable of doing that, no problem, and it probably should go a little better than that. So let's get into it. Alright, so these are the pump. Pump bolts, they have washers on them. You always take these washers off, we throw them away, they're uh, coated with like a, a little rubber substance. Uh, some people put RTV on them. Some people put them on as is. Um, also, some people use the bolts from the 4L60 that have a O-ring under the head and then have a flange and it's all encapsulated. Uh, one of the big things with, with anything in life, especially transmissions, is to stay organized. So pump bolts are ready. We can't take the pump out yet, so we're going to take the paint off. Oh yeah. I'm sure that's direct clutch sitting in there, and the magnet's not there. He probably kept it. Um, it smells not real good. Um, doesn't smell real bad, but it doesn't smell real good. So we know that it's probably half due for rebuild. So next we're going to take out the full converter clutch solenoid. Uh, this unit is going to go lock up. Um, I do have the converter here. It is a 10-inch lock up from Dave. Pusik at Turbo Buick Performance in Long Island, New York. And a shout out to Dave. Dave is uh, a great guy. He's taught me a lot about transmissions. And we're about to find a point of failure. <laughs> One of them. There you go. Oh, really? Look at that. Man. Okay. Well, we're, gonna, we're about to find some good stuff. Oh, man. Stator support. And if this doesn't work, sometimes it doesn't, you just take a pry bar and a little 
pop right there, but this oh. one works and it pops up. You don't you can do it without this tool as well. It might have some carnage under there. Carnage is not a good word. It's got some carnage. Oh man. Probably gonna take the overrun housing with it. And that's not good because there's a snap ring down there. So Oh, I heard something. I'm afraid of what it's doing here. All right, now we're going to take the pump apart. Um, I'm expecting to find a stock pump in there. So we're going to take it apart and hopefully it's got a 7 van rotor in it. It does. Here you go. Here's your failure. <laughs> so oh, that's man. good. That was going to get replaced anyways. These brittle rings are going to get replaced anyways. So that goes in the scrap pile. We have a seven vein rotor, which is what it came from GM with. Get new rings, we're gonna get new veins. Uh, we'll change the calibration in the on the slide. This one will stay as a lockup unit, so we will retain our lockup stuff inside of it. Let's see how hot this transmission has been. A good way to tell how hot something's been is to grab the rubber. And it breaks. Oh, it's brittle. And the next, the next indication will be when we get the valve body off. Okay. The cases. So this is um. Stock transmissions are good ones to take apart because usually they're pretty. Even though they've got a failure, their their hard parts are usually pretty good. And they're good candidates versus going behind somebody who's gone and got a Transgo shift kit or whatever shift kit and. Talk to somebody who's not familiar with the 200 about rebuilding. You want to inspect the slide pin. Make sure it's not worn. His is a little worn. Right in here, it's got a little wear, so we'll probably find him a nicer slide pin. That's a nice pump. It's actually a nice bushing. Why they don't have no grooves in it or? Yeah, this is all superficial. Okay. And there's a little bit of wear in the bushing right there, but that's normal. We'll replace the bushing. It's a uh, 690 pump, which was the last design pump. So this pump actually has a step in here that keeps the bushing from walking out. So this one doesn't need to be staked. It's actually saved me from having to knock these bolts out, take the stator support out. Um, this might not be any good. So I'm not going to say this is going to go again. And I usually swap most of these anyways. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, that's not going to go again because it's got deep grooves. So this would need to get a new stator support and it would get sent out and it would get parallel decked on both sides. So we will swap him with a new reman pump, which is not not a pump that I'm not going to go through. Um, what you're going to find in here, and I'm not going to take it up for video's sake, is you're going to find the pressure regulator valve train. It should be a 471 boost valve. Um, you're going to find your lockup valve train in there, which is present. And if you take your pick and go up and down... Yeah, it's free, it works. All right, so this pump, we'll take the guts out of it. We'll get a new stator support body. We'll move on, I'm gonna set this out of the way. And what I did when we were off video is I released the snap ring in here and that's how I got it out. Here is our thrust washer, very common there. It's worn. So was it too tight? I don't know, probably was. So is it gonna break? Yep. Mm. Brittle. Now you have your deflector, and this really, its purpose is to deflect. What is this, if you leave this out, the chances of uh, sending fluid out the vent are pretty high. So make sure you keep those in. And then we have our fourth clutch snap ring. 
got our overrun housing. These guys are chewed up. Obviously, probably from the failure. These will probably all have hot spots. Hot spots. A little dark. Not failed. Hot spots. This is all common. See how they go back to back. Okay, so it goes backing plate, clutch, steel, steel, clutch, backing plate. What we're going to do is we're going to put an extra clutch in there. So we're going to have three clutches instead of two. So that will increase the load on fourth, the torque capacity of 33 and a third percent. And how do I do that? I do that by removing approximately 80 thousandths from the fourth piston, which we'll show here in a second. Okay, here comes the overdrive ring carrier. A lot of these guys, we get these billet, this unit will not need that. Um, thrust washers, I just throw all my thrust washers in the thing, I know where they go. Here's our torrent there and it goes in there. Check all those, make sure they're free. Again, if they have like um, a roughness to them, they need to get replaced. But if they, they roll nice and smooth, they're good to go again. A little snap ring right here and you see that the play, that's perfectly normal. So when we're measuring front thrust, we have to pull that up and then measure our front thrust. That's the snap ring clearance. Um, usually this is about, it's about 20 thousandths or so. It does vary a little bit. And I've seen the billet ones where they fit nice and tight and you don't have that problem. It'll take a set and it will stay there. Doesn't matter how old you are or how many <laughs> transmissions you've done, snap rings are, they're pain in the butt. Okay, so this is our overrun clutch, and this is our input shaft. Um, these are also available in billet, but they're usually not needed unless you're in a serious uh, racing situation. These guys here are scarf cut. You see I'm pulling them right off. This guy is not. He is a solid seal, so I'm going to put a solid, solid, and solid on there. That's something that I learned. I mean, we all learn this stuff. It's not, um, there's really not any secrets. Okay, so I'll put solid Teflon rings on it. This is our overrun. Overrun is engine braking. So in three, two, and first, when you lost the gas, it'll kind of go like, that's, that's engine braking. Overdrive, it doesn't do that. You let off overdrive and it just coasts. You might notice your tack where it returns back to idle, even at highway speed. That's because there's no engine braking. So we're just going to go through here, we're going to look at all these pieces and we're going to make sure they're in good shape. And this is just a rough look, I obviously we'll clean them up and we'll really scrutinize them. This one, like most of them, is going to need planetaries. Even I'm starting to see the BR units are starting to need planetaries. So these are probably, this one's probably going to need a planet rebuilt or replaced. Usually I exchange them out with rebuilt ones I have here. Over on clutch usually is minty because it rarely gets used. In performance application, it gets used in the trans brake. This will not be getting a trans brake. Another snap ring. Up it comes. A little sprag. And this is how it was taught to me. The little man pushing the wheelbarrow up the hill. Okay, and you just want to check all of these little guys and make sure they're not broken. If they are, sprags are available and you want to check where the sprag rides, which in this case would be inside here. Inside there, you want to make sure it's not all grooved up. And then the piston. Okay, so piston came out real easily, so that tells me these seals are probably hard and it's it's time for, it was time for a rebuild. Okay, so that's overrun. And that's our snap ring. Now we're going to move to the center support and low piston. Big snap ring in there. Comes out real easy. Kind of a pain to put back in. It's 
spring retainer. Here comes the piston. So when the oil leaves, when the oil is not applied, that spring retainer makes this piston return. Okay, so it, when it applies, it goes against the springs. When the oil goes away, it seats. Okay, this is the piston. That's all it is, and you can see where the seals ride. It's a seal here, and there's a seal there. It's a steel piston. It's very strong. Um, this is what we cut. Put it in the lathe over there, and I'll machine it down to get my appropriate clearance for flush. Okay, so now we have got the front third out and we can't go any further until we take the valve body off um, because under the valve body are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the center support but before I do that I'm going to try and get this snap ring out of here there's a snap ring and the snap ring is beveled and the beveled snap ring the bevel on the snap ring goes to the pump Sometimes they're tricky. And sometimes they play nice. Okay. Bevel snap ring, so that means the bottom of it's flat and the top of it's at an angle. So now we have to flip the transmission on its back. It might lose some more fluid. And then we're going to start taking the valve body apart and the governor, all that good stuff. I like to start with the governor, which is these 413s. Sometimes the governor comes up with this, a lot of times it doesn't. time it doesn't and these gaskets are going to be brittle so they're probably going to have to be cooked in the jet wash. Once they're cooked in the jet wash at 160 degrees they'll come off really easy. Alright next is our governor. This is a Grand National governor. It's got the blue, the blue governor spring and I'm going to give you guys a little plug. I just had 500 of these reproduced so guess what TCI stopped making them so I'm seeing a need so I went ahead and invested in that, and I have governor springs. A lot of times governor springs get thrown, thrown out in the burnout box if you don't pin the governor. Sometimes they get thrown out if you do pin the governor. Um, I pin the governors, I learned that. Governor pinning's been around a lot longer than I have. Okay, so we undo the harness, TCC solenoids, now I should be able to zip all these out. Check balls are going to go flying everywhere. That's okay. I know where check balls go. Another indicator that this transmission is original is this little guy. This little guy does the TV. Okay, and there's a little spring in there, and a little like a like a half of a paper clip. And when I take the valve body off, there's going to be a, a check ball in here, a big check ball, not a, not a, a quarter inch check ball, next size up or whatever. The design of that is if your TV cable breaks, which is rare, the check ball will not let the line pressure go to the minimum line pressure, which say in this unit, say it would be 60 or 70 on the unmodded unit, it'll keep it around say 120, 150. I don't know if those are exact, but that's it's going to, supposed to keep you from burning the transmission up, and it's supposed to alert you. There's a problem. Hey, there's a problem. Something's up. I need to look at it or I need to get somebody who knows about transmissions involved. Okay, so we have our pressure switches. These guys are just continued. That's bad. Um, these pressure switches tend to leak a little bit around the diaphragm. They won't leak enough to burn a clutch, usually. I haven't seen one. I used to replace them in every unit. Now we test them. And this particular car has the ECU GN, so I'll have a conversation with the customer and see what he's going to do. And we may re 
replace only one of them with a new one and put the other one uh, up probably up and forth. I'm ready to take the valve body off. Make sure I got all my 10 millimeter bolts off. I do. Sticky. That means it's kind of hot. Don't want to lose this guy. Looking at the valve body. What are we looking for? We're looking for that code there that says BR3. This is the BR coded transmission. You're also looking for that pink stripe. Again, this is an original one. It looks good. Looks like it's probably never been modified. So we'll take it, we'll put it in the pan. Let it drain. Hey, I got a question for you. You don't do any modifications to the valve bodies. Do you? We do a lot of modifications to the valve body. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I wouldn't say a lot, but we it's called Shift kit is not what it's called. It's called uh, shift kit is, is copyright proprietary, but valve body mods. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a couple things we change in the valve body. Yes, and there are shift kits out there, and I don't believe any of them. I'm just trying to, I put it this way: I don't buy a shift kit. I have the own the stuff that I learned through the years through various different builders, what to do, what not to do. There's a couple springs that are needed that you can source elsewhere. Okay, so we got the valve body off, and I'm looking at one, two, three check balls. Steel check balls and the steel plate, a lot of times they beat the seats. We'll evaluate that upon rebuilding, and we are left with the one, two accumulator. You want your transmission to make really aggressive banging shifts, you delete your accumulators. I don't recommend that. Um, you can block this one, which is the one two. Right below it is the three four, and then in the servo is the two three. The two three we almost always block. Sometimes we open this up and find a broken spring. This one is not. Pull the ATF. These guys leak badly. They all they leak badly. Um, there's a, there's some work that needs to go on these accumulators to keep them from leaking. So there's our that seal, that pin. They leak in here. Uh, Sonex sells a kit for that. This guy here again looks to be unmodified. Here's our plate. We'll keep all these guys together, and then here is our separator plate or channel plate depending on what you want to call it, it's the same thing. Uh, back in my GM days, it was called a channel plate. When I left the dealer, they were channel plates. When I started doing transmissions in the transmission shop in 03, they were separator plates, but they're the same thing. And that's what I expect. It's, <coughs> it's coming off in pieces, it's been hot, it's brittle. So what we're gonna look at on this is we're gonna look for a stamping on it, tell me that's an X plate almost certain it is. And these, these seats will wear. The X should be up in there. And of course it's caked on. It's not going to let me get to it. But I'm going to assume it's an X plate. Even if it's not an X plate, um, it will get an X plate when it goes back. Okay, so now we have a bunch of check balls. All the bathtubs will have a check ball. We should have, I believe, seven. One. Here's the one two accumulator. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And there's a seventh one down there as well. These are all the quarter inch steel check balls. A lot of times they go flying. People we got about it. Okay, so we have seven. But if you remember a minute ago, I talked about when the TV cable would break. Up here is a bigger check ball. There it is. So again, further proof that this is probably a transmission that's never been opened. These springs also break. This is the 3-4 uh, accumulator spring. Okay. 
Now we're going to make a mess. I stand it up. And before I do that, we've got two things to do. We're going to get this 3 4 accumulator piston out. These guys leak too. And using our 10 millimeters for the center support. 18 foot pounds is the tightest anything is on this transmission. The center supports are 18 foot pounds. The governor uh, cover are 18 foot pounds. The pump bolts are 18 foot pounds, external, internal. And the valve body bolts are in inch pounds. And here we will make a mess. Here it comes. A lot of times when you pull the center support out, there's not a special tool. Um, if it gets stuck, I'll have to get a pair of, of uh, channel, uh, channel locks or vice grips. It came most of the way up. A lot of times it'll cock on the way up. So, just slid back down. Okay, so it comes up. So in the event of a transmission that's in bad shape, sometimes this will come out with the direct drum and the forward drum attached, steel rings, thrust washer, seals, not a whole lot going on in here. There's a couple things to look at, a couple things to do when you put it back together. We call it the center support because it's about the center of transmission. Here is our band anchor, so I'm going to grab the forward drum shaft. That pushes it up just enough to release the band. And here comes the direct drum and the forward drum. This drum right here, this surface is third gear. Inside of it, I'm sorry, this surface is second gear. Inside of it is third gear, and I already can tell by looking at the clearance in that guy that, yeah, third gear is what we're seeing in the pan. Here's the forward drum. People talk about billet parts and then transmission. This is the usual suspect that we replace because this little stub breaks off. Um, this is almost mandatory on any transmission. Very rarely do I build a transmission that doesn't have a billet forward drum. I tell the customer, you know, guess what? All the power flow goes through this piece. All four forward gears in reverse. So if that little stub breaks off, you're stuck. Versus, if the direct clutch is laying in the pan, it's still running and driving, and you can get to point A to point B and, and save it. So, forward clutch, that's a lot of clearance. So, what we'll do, we'll look at forward first. Alright, we got forward clutch, and we have the backing plate. And then we have all the clutches and four, four clutches and they look stock and one, two, three, four, five steels and a wavy plate. All these guys are all trash except for this guy and that guy. Um, I don't put any billet pistons in forward clutch. I feel it's a waste of money. And rollerizing it again, uh, there's only one piece of this unit that I rollerize. Some people rollerize more. So this is our forward drum, that's what we're going to see, and now we're going to look at our direct clutch. That's probably where we're going to see most of our clutch material that was in the pan. And before we do that, just look at the, it's got a lot of clearance, it's way too much. Survey says. Survey says that yeah. Oh yeah. So we're starting from the top, trash. These guys are supposed to be tan. They're black. Look at look at all the hot spots. So no bueno. So all of this stuff, all of it is trash. When we use any of it. Um, in the bottom of this clutch, we have a ring. Okay, I'm going to replace that. Okay, here's a piston. 
this ring that came out of that piston will fit in this piston like so. We're going to take this aluminum apply ring, we put it on there, look at the surface, the surface area, the much more surface area to apply versus just this. So this goes in every unit I build. It doesn't matter if it's a stock type rebuild or if it's a, you know, a full built unit. So this, I won't throw it away, but uh, we won't use it again. Sometimes you can swap these into forward clutch and you can play with your clearances. Another thing that all the units get will be a, a new pressure plate. Okay, that's gonna replace this guy. Oh, okay. Okay, this guy's no good. Cocky. Mm. Okay. Oh, because of the gear uh, shapes? Well, because of that. Oh, the hot spot? The hot spot. Okay. That's no good. So right. every unit gets one of these. This piece here replaces the center piece. In the event of a dual feed unit, we put much heavier springs in there and it will, it'll bow this thing. And I actually talked to somebody yesterday who wants to use this piece even on his stock units. So that's a piece that I have made. It'll go in there. We're not gonna take these guys apart on video. And next thing we need to look at, things will go quick from this point, is the band. Out comes the band. It should be a Borg Warner B210 band. Yep, and there's my BY210. Band seen better days. So, just like expected. Okay, so mm. now any unit. Look at that, y'all. Yuck, yuck. Look at that. Yuck, yuck. All right, so down there we have our selective thrust washer. Looks like it's been hot. Looks like it might have been too tight. Who knows? That's a number eight and you can feel the groove on it that's interesting because usually these take a, a, a lot higher thrust wash than this but we're going to redo all of it so that thrust washer is trash and now we're going to fight with this snap ring now we are in the bottom third the second third is forward and direct in the band and the servo servo we haven't taken out and we're going to fight with this because because we're in a video. There we are. Okay, this guy right here is our selective washer. And I see so many people grabbing out push shaft of their transmission and wiggling it and saying, oh, it's bad, it's bad. That's This is what determines how, how much slop that has. There's a color code on it, see? And it will always have slop. It'll never not have any. So we're gonna take all this stuff apart. These guys like to wear. ring gear don't see a whole lot of problems there here's our planet since this is a BR planet hopefully it's good BR planets have um, different thrust washers than the regular 204 R's here's our torrenton bearing yeah that's beautiful nice and smooth and we're gonna check these planets that's tight Oop, we got a little there that's in there. So it's questionable. It's probably gonna get replaced. And what I mean is if you look down there at the bronze, all the other ones don't have bronze. The BR planetaries and the BR units have these bronze thrust washers, but so. it could go again, but just because it could doesn't mean it should. Here is our sun gear with our another Torrington bearing on it. Looks good. And here is our uh, sun shell. These units had a hardened sun shell. The earlier 204Rs did not. And there is a hardened sun shell available. We're going to come out. You can see that they like to fight. Don't usually see a lot of problems with these. Tell you what, a lot of parts to automatic transmission. All right, and here is something that GM should have done that they didn't do. This guy here chews up this guy down here, that surface down there. This one's not bad. Um, the kits have a plastic thrust washer, um, but actually, I don't know who did it, but everybody does it that I know of. We, we rollerize that for a, a Torrington bearing. And I will definitely do that. So this, I've got so many. When you of these. say roller rise, y'all put a groove in it or something? Yes. Okay, got it. it. Like, got um, it. Here. Looks like that. 
Oh, okay. And then they'll take the right here. CP nut. What are you talking about? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like putting a road in it. It holds it. Mm. And you can use that. You can determine the depth of this to help tighten up your thrust or make it looser. Okay. Every unit, every unit that I do gets that. Every unit gets rollerized. Every unit gets the extra clutch and overdrive. Every unit gets solid Teflon rings. Um, I push billet drums in every unit. I push billet band anchors in every unit. A lot of times this guy breaks off. And we are down to it. We'll get this snap ring out real quick. And I'll have a special tool. It has a cute little name that I'll tell you when I get to it. So that's going through the bottom, through the side. There it is. You just have to walk it around. If I had a bigger screwdriver with more meat to it, this would be done by now. This is also beveled. So flat side down, bevel to the top. Okay, this tool right here. This guy. Mm. See, mine needs help. It needs some epoxy. <laughs> but we call this the abortion tool. So we put that down in there lock it and pull it up a lot of times it comes out a lot of times you have to fight with it go. there we go it fought but it lost and of course my little old uh handle needs to visit with the epoxy but there you go low support that's our low piston so rollerize it and now this is easy we have a spacer snap ring in there which you can take out by hand what you're looking at you're looking at the low clutches which only get used in low and reverse hence the name low and reverse so they should be good and you're looking at the low sprag in a sprag race that's first gear and you're also looking at the low planet that's everything mm. <laughs> so we take this apart a lot of times these low reverse frictions if they're original and need to be replaced um they delaminate very common so don't ever reuse those if you're not sure that they're original if you think they're original replace them if you know they've been replaced they're safe to use again because they very rarely wear out unless you use like a trans brake or something like that. Again, more Torrington bearings. Another bronze thrust washer here. Here's your output shaft. Yeah, this is our output shaft. Here's our low planet. Let's see how this guy is. Eh. Marginal. Could go again. Here's our low sprag. What a sprag is, is a one-way roller clutch. So see, it rolls, it's rolling. This way, it won't roll, it locks. Mm. So that's our one-way roller clutch. So we're gonna inspect this for grooving and wear. It looks nice. Here's our sprag. Again, you're gonna inspect these, all of them. Make sure they're all present. Make sure you don't lose the rollers. There's a torrenting bearing down there. Pay attention to the orientation of it direction-wise. Probably won't come out for me because of the fluids holding in there, so we'll get that after. There is your case, your spacer. Snap ring doesn't really do anything when the space comes out. And we're gonna look at the friction. So that was against the case. Again, these frictions look good. Let me see if I can find one that's delaminating. This one probably won't have one. These are what they should look like in a healthy unit. That's what everything should look like if you take it apart for a refresh. We're not going to have one that's delaminated. Nope. So, and this is a wave plate. And this cushions the apply. 
which goes on the very top. So the case is empty. So what's left? Mm, the servo. You got an empty case and you got a servo. So I need a pair of uh, snap ring, not snap ring, a pair of, go ahead. All right, we're gonna take that snap ring out. There it is, dirty. Big pair of channel locks. I'm on the wrong side of the case. If I was on the other side of the case, I'd come right out. All right. There's our seals. There's our accumulator. There's a little hole for the accumulator. There's our pink spring, which some people take out. You take that out, you're going to get a clunk on the 3 2 coast down. And there's your knockoff spring for the 2 3 shift. And this is a three ring. There's I think there's a two ring. I think there's a no ring. I'm not sure about a, a one one ring and there's a servo board there's a little capsule in there please be sure the capsule's in there somebody thought it was a good idea to take them out of them it's not. oh i see what you're talking about watch if i move yeah. it let's go make a liar out of it there's a capsule in there and if there, there is a ball in there are capsule. you talking about that little roll pin i'm talking about this guy in here oh okay there's a little ball in there and it's, a, it's a check ball um, and some people leave it out they don't do that anymore because they realize it doesn't work mm. so there you go that's the 204 tear down. tear down the only other things that we would do is we're going to replace that seal we're going to take out the plug and change the o-ring on that i don't have a reason to take these out i usually don't uh, sometimes i don't even take these out i use the tool to replace that um and then we have the case vent it's probably going to be brittle so we'll get a new case vent okay. and this guy i gotta take out my speedo bullet so 10 millimeter pop him out and he's out so that's this tore down this is mr wendell sharpton's transmission tore down and we're going to replace that bushing okay replace that with a teflon bushing mm -hmm. so 204 tear down complete not a bad unit even with that pump that's okay now what 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 <clears throat> Do you think a lot of times when you say heat tore up a lot of stuff in here, substandard transmission fluid? No, I mean trans <coughs> transmissions make heat. That's what it is. That's just what it is. <coughs> okay. Um, Excuse me. These guys had Dextron two in them, mm -hmm. which has been superseded so many times now. Um, yeah, I think we up to six or I seven. Think we're up now? to eight. Eight. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, HP, I believe, is is full synthetic. Okay. Um, so I don't. You don't have to run full synthetic, but I always recommend people run a synthetic blend like a Dextron 6. Okay. That works really good. And then they, they like their, like a trick shift. That's fine too. Uh, trick shift is like a type F. Type F is a thicker fluid. Okay. Make the shifts from her. Um, people are like, well, what, what fluid did you build it for? Honestly, it's built so it can use any fluid. Gotcha. Now, the newer fluids are more resilient to higher temperatures. So it means the older fluid, say at 250, it was cooked. Well, now it can see 275 intermittently and maybe even touch 300. But if it sees any one of those things, it needs to be changed immediately. Um, the, the biggest thing to watch with the transmission is watch your fluid. And if it starts to get purple, you need to change it. Um, but a transmission like this, going in an application where it's going to be beat on, I tell people transmissions are like brakes. They're consumable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can see. I see all the parts. Things wear out. Yeah. Things wear out. Things break. And then when you start doing trans brake launches and two-step launches and rear ends grenade i mean things break gotcha. it happens so but yeah. that's you know um yeah. but if you take care of them they'll last a long time too if you don't abuse it got you so but this one will shift it'll shift it won't shift like a cadillac but it'll have firm shifts that will get progressively firmer with throttle application and it should never bang and hopefully it will never clunk on the downshifts BRF. if I do my job correctly. BRF. And the key to that is the unmolested springs in the transmission that makes that possible. Uh, when you start messing with springs, like people will leave, they'll leave, they'll leave these out. 
or they'll change them and then you just screwed up your three two and two three shift timing um, and then they go in the valve body and they start messing with springs and they screw that up there's only a couple changes that need to be done in the valve body right, so so that's what we got Oh, there's Fina right there. Hey, we appreciate Steve V Automotive out of Elberon, Virginia, uh, showing us. Uh, I thought it was a simple teardown team running, but no, it ain't simple. Uh, he gave us the teardown of a 200 4R transmission out of a Buick Grand National. What is it? A BRF BR transmission calibration. Yeah, calibration. Yeah. And it's all about the valve body, right? BRQ? V BR? BR. BR. There's BR3, BR2. Um, there might even be some others, but BR is calibration and BQ is your hot air, 8485. And we appreciate them showing us, you know, really all this. This is like very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Complex for me. Uh, I tore down um, a 350 years ago, but man, that was years ago. It's a puzzle. Transmissions yeah. are puzzles. Yeah. Take it in a box, shake it up, put it back together. Hope it works. Man, we appreciate them, you know, inviting us over, showing us this tech session of the teardown hopefully you guys enjoy it uh you know uh peanut where you at peanut walking around with his new phone but he was looking to you look at to uh, <laughs> he'll, appreciate it later on, he'll appreciate it yeah he'll appreciate <laughs> we'll, we'll get you working it you but one thing i do i do notice though i don't really smell burnt transmission fluid no you know what i'm saying out of this i can smell burnt transmission fluid a mile away yep. i don't know why it's just a raunchy smell to me so if he didn't break his if he didn't break his uh, stator support, he mm -hmm. probably would still be going down the road waiting for uh, the three four clutches to to uh, burn up. Not three four clutches, the direct clutches. Three four is a four by sixty. Um, waiting for a direct clutch to, to piece out or the band to piece out, it probably would start flaring on a two three shift. Uh, Which this one may have been flaring on a two three shift. He just thought it was a three four shift. Um, so common symptom on these transmissions. So we gonna we gonna go ahead and you know close this video out. We appreciate Steve for real. And, um, you know, close it out. We're going to try to bring y'all some more of these videos, you know, especially to Team Run It, the Grand National, my Grand National followers. You know what I'm saying? Like, we try, we don't, remember, we still bring in Grand National content, but we do everything. But really, Steve is the, you know, he's a Grand National guy through and through. We come over here, get educated. We want to, we want y'all to come along for the ride and get educated with us. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification, Hit that notification bell. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we're going to have some more content coming, y'all, because Steve inviting us over again for something else he's going to tear into. Or he's just going to show us and give us tips on how to better maintain our turbo Buicks. You know what I'm saying? But let me not let me state this as a disclaimer. Steve works on everything, y'all. He does. He works on everything, but he's very passionate about turbo Buicks. So as y'all can tell, you know what I'm saying? So I do want to put that disclaimer out there. But, hey, we got to go. We out. Peace. Peace.